Please read with me our scripture lesson for today that comes from Paul, a letter to the Romans, here in chapter 8, verses 18 through 28. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us, for the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we await for adoption, the redemption of our bodies, For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. Friends, this is for us the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. O God of steadfast love and boundless mercy, you overwhelm and overmatch our lives with goodness beyond measure, day after day affirming and confirming your promises of blessing. Thank you, Lord, for the strength of your yes. But now, please, teach us the power of your no. Teach us the no of a potter who so skillfully perfects the clay into a purposed vessel of beauty. Show us the no of a shepherd who so dutifully hymns in the flock from both straying and strays. Speak to us the no of a friend who so lovingly invites companions to know and become their truest selves. O God, by your Spirit, work in us this power so that we may be unafraid of your holy disruptions and gladly welcome your no, not as punishment, but as merely a variation on the theme, yes and amen. And the people of God say together, amen. So uh, for a few months now, my family and I, we noticed that a lot of our life had been so wrapped around the details of living. And if you have ever had children at home, then you know about some of those details of living that we just simply forgot to have fun together. So we instituted what we call our family fun night, which is usually a Friday, okay? So that's our family fun night. Uh, And in the family fun night, the kids get to decide whatever it is we're going to do, which a lot of times involves a lot of food and some movies because, you know, that's what you do when you're having fun, at least in the Johnson household. So uh, a few uh, months ago, uh, one of the movies that uh, we decided we would watch is this movie that's out on Netflix that I didn't particularly care for myself, but I got outvoted, okay? Uh, But it's a movie called Yes Day. Anybody seen Yes Day? Anybody? Anybody know Yes Day? Yeah, so Yes Day, this movie stars Jennifer Garner and everything. It, it's an okay movie. It, it has an interesting premise to it. Um, and the premise is really, it's based off of this children's book by Rosenthal and Lichtenheld here. And uh, the premise is that mom and dad, Allison and Carlos, mom and dad, they used to say yes to everything in life. And when they met and later on got married, they were saying yes to everything. But then... Well, they moved to the suburbs, they had three kids, and their life (laughs) became a long line of no, (laughs) no. (laughs) 
Their oldest daughter, Katie, who's 14 when we see her in the movie here, she gets a no from her mom for going to a concert with her friends. The dad, Carlos, gets a no uh, all day long at work as he has to be the boss who has to say no to everybody and to everything. The mom, Allison, she's trying to get back into the workforce, and every job interview she goes to, all she hears over and over again is no. Finally, we find that um, Katie, uh, the daughter, she uh, is at school and she does a school project, does a video project that uh, alerts the guidance counselor that we need to talk to mom and dad a little bit. So they call mom and dad in. They show mom and dad the video that Katie has made where Katie compares mom, mommy dearest, to being Stalin or Mussolini. <laughs> Apparently mom really loves, in Katie's mind, to say no. The guidance counselor gives some advice to mom and dad and say, you know what, this is what has helped me in my own life in having a family of six kids and how we can stay so relaxed and so easygoing, how we can get through this life with a smile on our face and everything, is that you ought to have, he tells them, a yes day. A yes day where every answer to every question is nothing short of yes. Doesn't matter what it is. If, if uh, little Johnny wants to do this or that, the answer is yes. If uh, Carlos wants to go do this or that, the answer is yes. If you feel like doing such and such, the answer is yes. Mom has a hard time with this concept initially, but mom finally agrees that for 24 hours, with some ground rules, mind you, we'll have a yes day. And then we get to watch an hour and 20 minutes of all of the chaos, I mean uh, apocalypse, I mean fun <laughs> that happens for this yes day. Now, of course, this is a family film, and I, I do commend it to you if you are interested in these types of things and whatnot, and it's based on this premise of this yes and no dichotomy that revolves around some uh, stereotypical things you might think a child or certain children might particularly enjoy. But I wonder today, what would a yes day look like for you? I mean, what do you hope you could hear a yes to today? What do you long to hear a yes to today? What do you wish you could say yes to today? Now, to be sure, if, if you live long enough, you'll discover and you'll learn, and some of you know this really well, that not everything nor every day can be a yes. Sometimes you got to say no. Sometimes you have to receive a no before you can ever actually get to a yes, because some yeses require self-denial and sacrifice and a kind of letting go. Well, that's going to be next week's sermon, so you come back next week, we'll talk about that piece. But sometimes, sometimes, I don't know about you, but I really, I really just want to hear a yes. Sometimes I need to hear a yes. I mean, a yes can lift your spirits and help you feel supported and affirmed. A yes can make you feel brave, give you the courage to actually take that dare and to step out into a new venture or adventure. A yes can simply squelch any anxiety or fear that may creep into your life, can give you peace and the reassurance that everything will be all right. A yes can most definitely and emphatically give you hope. Today, friends, we start this short two-week series entitled The Power of Yes and the Power of No. But today, we're just going to focus in on the yes, and especially on God's yes to us. You see, this series is inspired in part by prayer, the prayer that you heard being read in the bumper video and that's printed on the front cover of your bulletin here. 
That prayer was written based on a piece of scripture that we find in Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. It says this, For the Son of God, Jesus the Anointed, whom we have preached to you, was not both yes and then no, but with him, with Christ, the answer is always yes. And in Jesus, we hear a resounding yes to all of God's many promises, this is the reason, then, that we say amen to and through Jesus when giving glory to God. In other words, what Paul is trying to say to the Corinthians is that it is the person, the work, the teaching, the life, death, resurrection, ascension, return, and ultimate reign of Jesus Christ that demonstrates the faithfulness and surety of God's promises. Jesus is God's yes. And likewise, it is our acceptance of that fact, our submission to this fact, to the fact that Jesus is Lord of our lives and Lord of all the world, all of creation. It is our submission to this and our faith put into practice through an intentional and active love of God and neighbor in everything that we do that affirms and confirms to the whole world, the whole of creation, the certainty of God's promises. In short, God says yes to us through Jesus, and through Jesus, we say amen to God's yes. You've heard of a yes man? You've heard that before, that term, yes man before? Well, we're not yes, yes people. We're amen people. That's who you are. You're an amen person. Point to yourself, says, I'm amen people. Yeah. Now, to be sure, amen is this Hebrew word that we find all throughout Scripture, and indeed, you actually find it in, being used in multiple languages around the world, so much so that it's called the best-known word in human speech. It, it's rootness, it, in its root meaning, it means firm and true. And when spoken, it gives the connotation that something is faithfully true, definitively certain, and justifiably worthy. In other words, amen is both a statement of faith and a declaration of hope. That when we say amen, we're co-signing onto whatever it is said or whatever has been done that we can affirm is true, that we can know is certain, and that we can believe. Believe deep down in our heart, deep down in our bones, in our spirits. It is worthy of pursuit and our full support. I wonder, what are you saying amen to today? What's the thing in your life that you're saying amen to today? Or what's the thing that you wish you could say amen to today? Uh, now I know on this Labor Day Sunday, some of us may be glad to say amen to a long weekend of joy and laughter with family and friends, but I know that some folk, some folk in here, maybe on your pew, maybe even in your seat, will find that the hardness of life today leaves them struggling to say any kind of amen to anything. Spouses struggling to stay connected to each other in grace and forgiveness. Parents struggling to find balance and fulfillment and meaning for their lives and their families. Children and youth in our community struggling to make sense of a world with so many conflicting messages and priorities. Some of us struggling, to make, to, struggling with grief from losing those who have loved us so deeply and those whom we've once held so dear. Some of us struggling with loneliness longing for that sense of knowing and belonging that true companionship affords. And whole communities, I mean, it doesn't take long to read the list of headlines, whether that be on social media or uh, on, on, on the newspapers or wherever, whole communities struggling and bound by unjust policies that imprison individuals and families in seemingly endless cycles of unemployment, of violence, of poverty and poor health and education. See, sometimes we struggle to say amen because, frankly, there are just some things that are not right in the world. 
They're not right in my world, not right in your world. But maybe this is where we need to stop, look, and listen, as we've been talking about these last few weeks, to hear again God's yes, to hear God say to us that our present sufferings are not our ultimate end, to hear God say that we are not defined by our trauma nor our drama, but by God's presence alone with us, and that God's love made real to us through Jesus Christ can transpose us and our circumstances into instruments of God's goodwill. We need to hear God's yes. We, we need Jesus. And when we, through the waters of our baptism, and the power of the Holy Spirit can identify ourselves as Jesus' people, then we'll find that, as Paul says earlier in this passage in Romans in verses 16 and 17 of chapter 8, that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, will bear witness with our spirit that we are children of the Almighty God. And if children, then we're heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ, heirs of God's promise, that the promise is for me and for you. And when we, through the power of the Holy Spirit, can let our lives say amen to Jesus, then we can become the embodiment of hope that the whole creation is eagerly waiting for. Yeah, you're the one they're waiting for. Nobody else, you. <laughs> so as we heard earlier from Romans 18, verse 19, for the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. Paul goes on to say, for the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. The whole creation, friends, is waiting, no longing for us, for the children of God to show up, for God's amen people to show up. The world is crying for you and me to absolutely get over ourselves and to actually believe the promise of God's yes and truly be the people of God. People whose lives reflect the assurance that Jesus is indeed real and to actually act like you know him and love him. People whose lives exude an unshakable hope that God can and does and will use anything and anybody in any circumstance to transform the world into the place where God's goodwill is perfectly known. People, to be people whose lives, whose speech, and whose actions always and everywhere and only infuse nothing but hope and joy into the world to disrupt every power of death, hell, and destruction in the name of Jesus. Friends, following Jesus matters. Your life as a Christ follower matters because you are God's image in the world. You and I are made in the image of God to reflect God's image to the whole creation. It's like one of my favorite gospel singers, Kirk Franklin says in his song, The Last Jesus says, if I say I love Jesus, but you can't see my Jesus, then my words are empty if they can't see Jesus in me. No more excuses, I give myself away because I may be the only Jesus they see. Friends, you may be the only Jesus somebody sees. And it's not because God needs a mirror, but it's rather so that we might be the amen to God's promise to never leave or forsake us. That, that promise is Jesus, by the way, if you didn't get that. So that you might be the amen to Jesus. <laughs> See, from the very beginning, when you, when you go back and you read your Bible from the beginning to the end, and by the way, you should go and read your Bible, 
right? Just go home this afternoon. Just start reading. It's okay. Just take five minutes. Doesn't matter what you read. Just read the thing. Reading your Bible will make you a better Christian. Amen? Amen? Okay. Amen. 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 When you read from the very beginning, back in Genesis, when God makes human beings, makes them in God's image, and God places them in that very first garden to be God's representatives, literally that being made in the image is to represent God in the world, God in creation. And then you go all the way to when Jesus then tells his disciples in the book of Acts that the Holy Spirit will enable them to be witnesses to literally be martyrs, one whose life and death, the totality of who they are, begins to stand as a true record of something else, you'll find that God's intention from the beginning all the way through and up till now has only been for our everyday human lives and living to reveal to all of creation that God is here and there is hope. God is here. God is with us. And there is hope. Now, I know some of you, some of you are saying, well, but you don't know, like, my my life is completely messed up. How can my life reflect who God is, reflect that God is here? How can my situation or my circumstance, how can it bear witness to such a great promise? Well, this is This is where God's grace steps in and the power of the Holy Spirit. And we heard it earlier in the Scripture at verse 26 when Paul says, the Spirit helps us in our weakness because we don't know how we ought to be praying. But the very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God who searches the heart knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. In other words, God's grace and God's Spirit makes us become the amen we seek to be. You ain't got to work so hard, friends. <laughs> Just let Jesus use you. Let the Spirit do its work in your life, and before you know it, all of your life, even all of your fears, your doubts, your troubles, all of your pain and your potential, all of it will become an amen by the power of the Holy Spirit. See, God sent Jesus as that emphatic yes to all of our questions, to all of our fears and anxieties, to all of our trouble and all of our heartache and all of our potential, so that through the power of the Holy Spirit, God then sends us to be the resounding amen to that yes, to all of life. All of my life, all of your life, all of creation is transformed into nothing but a chorus of yes and amen, yes and amen, yes and amen. MDUMC, the the question really is, can we be God's amen people? Are you God's amen people? What do you need to say today? What do you need to say amen to today to be God's amen people? Who needs to see in us and hear from us the amen to find in us proof that God loves every creature and everybody, to see in us that God is with us and will never leave or abandon us, to find through us that God can indeed turn every hard thing into something beautiful and sacred, and to know through us, through our speech, through our actions, through our living, that God is faithful to every promise, and every promise is yes through Jesus. This West Houston Memorial area is waiting. Our public schools, our teachers, administrators, and especially our students are waiting. Those without adequate shelter or health care or food or work, they're all waiting. Our dry and thirsty land is waiting. The whole creation is waiting eagerly. Can we be God's amen people? Are you ready to be God's amen people? Are you ready to be 
God's amen people. Are you ready to be God's amen people? Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken, so let the church say amen. If you're ready, will you sing this with me? Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Let this be your prayer, this amen. Let it come out of you. Say, let the church say Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Amen.